more of your spirit. That's what this world needs. Hallelujah. We need it now more of your spirit. Lord. Yeah. 
together in his day to worship him hallelujah yes we know that he's the Lion of Judah. How many know he is the Lion of Judah? He rules, he reigns. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and give him all the honor? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, give him a praise all over the building. Everything to have breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, congregation, I want everyone to just take in a deep breath this morning. Come on, take in a deep breath. Now let it out. Let everything to have breath, praise ye the Lord. Come on and give him a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to make an observation. Uh, we have three car, four cars um, in the no parking zones. Um, out front, there's a, a purple or maroon Toyota Corolla, a Ford Fusion with a Michigan tag, and a silver Explorer in the front. Um, you're in a no parking zone. We ask that you move your, your vehicles. You can park across the lot. 
And there's one other vehicle in the bus parking back here, a Taurus, in the bus parking, in the back par parking lot. You need to move your cars and go over there in the other parking lot, all right? And we welcome everybody, amen? amen. And at this time, we're going to have our pastor to come forth. Let's receive the man of God by saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, let's give the Lord a hand today as be worthy to be praised. We're happy for all of our visitors that are here with us, especially our first time visitors. Amen. And we hope that uh, the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ will rest upon you. Uh, we're going to have our prayer list read by Sister Spaulding, and then we will be going before the throne of grace uh, on today. How many of y'all believe that God answers prayer? I mean, how many of y'all really believe he answers prayer? So those that would like to come down to the altar uh, as we begin to go before the throne of grace, you are more than welcome to. If you know someone that is sick that is not here, if you want to stand in for them, you can feel free to come down. We're going to pray the prayer of faith, salvation, and deliverance, and God's going to do something. He's going to move in a special way. We're looking for him to save we're looking for him to loose the bound and set the captive free. Amen. I think I'm in the right church. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. He is the Savior of the world. God bless you, Sister Paul. Praise the Lord. We're going to read the corporate prayer list. At this time, first on the list, souls to be saved. Suffragan Bishop Rader Johnson, First Lady Rhoda Johnson, Mother Elaine Stewart, Mother Elnora Fountain, Mother Georgia Bender, Mother James Atta Gerton, Mother Thelma Mitchell, Sister Margaret Kane, Sister Paula Lewis, Sister Evelyn Archie, Sister Mary Christina Henderson Greenwell, Sister Leola Davis, Trustee Bernard Radford, Sister Ernestine Garner, Minister Cleopatra Buckner, First Lady Elizabeth Trumbo, Sister Yolanda Foreman, Brother Richard Loudon, Brother James Gibson, Lady Margaret Thomas, Dr. Roosevelt Alcorn, Sister Sue's brother-in-law, Raymond Shannon, and all bereaved families at Greater Bethel Temple. And also we have a request to please pray for Christina Johnson, that's Elder Larry Smith's daughter. She is having surgery today, and she is in Audubon Hospital. Amen. Amen. God bless you. In the church say amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all know that name? Jesus, Jesus. Let everyone stand as we go for the Lord and pray. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call his name this afternoon. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, help me out, choir. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to call him. Jesus, Jesus. How many of y'all know Jesus today? Come on and call him. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, one more time. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call him for your healing. Call him for your deliverance. Call him for your salvation. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, if you need him this morning, call him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, let him hear you call his name. Jesus, Jesus. The devil hates that name, y'all. Jesus. Come on, one more time at the top of your voice. Hey, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord, today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on and call him Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. He's my Savior, y'all. Savior, Savior. Oh, I want you to save today, Lord. Savior, Savior. What's his name, church? What's his name? Jesus. Come on, save you one more time. Save you. Have your way today, save you. Have your way. Save. Oh, I love you today, Lord. I feel your presence. Save you, save. What's his name, y'all? 
Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands all around this church. Come on, clap your hands. Put your hands together. Lord Jesus Christ, we come today, Lord, as humble as we know how. We give you praise and glory for all things, Lord. You woke us up this morning in our right minds, gave us life, health, and strength, and started us on our way. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, grace, and mercy that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We thank you for blessing Brother Gibson to be back in our midst on today, Lord, working a miracle in his body. Oh, God, you are truly a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Whenever we need you most, you are always there. Oh, God, right now, we thank you. We praise you. Most of all, for this great salvation that you have given us, Lord, washing our sins away in your mighty name and filling us with your Holy Ghost power, giving us the gift of holiness and righteousness, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you right now. We give you the praise. We thank you for all of our visitors that are here. Some are first-time visitors. Some are recurring visitors, Lord. Some came searching for something, Lord. Some came, oh God, looking for, amen, you in their life. Stretch out your hand right now. Oh God, send help from your sanctuary. We call you. Oh God, by your mighty name, Jesus. Lord God, have your way in this service, Lord. Touch someone's heart, Lord. Touch someone's mind. Touch someone's spirit right now, Lord. Let them look beyond the food and look for their soul. Oh God, because you're still in the same in business. Bind the powers of darkness and the demons of hell. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Take your hands off of God's people. I bind you, I bind you. I send you into dry places right now. Take your hands off my sister. Take your hands off my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, have your way right now. Uh, save somebody, Lord. Uh, set the captive free. Uh, heal right now. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, look on those that are sick, Lord. Uh, look on Sister Henderson, Sister Arlene, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Brother Herbert Jones, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, others that are sick, Lord. Uh, unable to be here. Uh, have your way. Uh, have your way. Uh, have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, bless these here at the altar. Uh, bless those that are in the pew right now. Uh, Remember those we've forgotten in prayer. Huh? Bless this choir, Lord. Huh? Oh, God, as they sing the praises of Zion. Huh? Bring back the backslider, Lord. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? And we'll give you the praise. Huh? We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. Huh? That you alone deserve right now. Because huh? you alone are worthy to be praised. Huh? These blessing when we ask. Huh? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? In Jesus' name. Huh? Everybody ought to clap their hands up and give God some glory. Somebody say there's something about the name Jesus. All right, I told him that I lose things right in my hand <laughs> sometimes. There's something about the name Jesus, amen? amen? Healing power, deliverance power, saving power. And we want to always keep him on our mind. At this time, our scripture reading will be led by Brother Kevin Hill. Let's receive him by saying amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank God. This time we'll read our scripture. We'd like to have everyone please stand. And uh, the scripture will be found in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. We'll, be, we'll read responsibly from verse 6 through 16. It's Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Starting verse 6 through verse 16. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things 
cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. For it, is, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. <laughs> Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Read the last verse together, please. Redeeming. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. May the Lord bless and sanctify the reading of his word. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. How many came to praise and to magnify the Lord today? Amen. Amen. I didn't come to look at you. You didn't come to look at me. But we came to give God the glory. Am I right about it? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. He's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, a prince of peace, an everlasting father. He is our God, and we are his people, and we magnify the Lord for that. At this time, we're going to be uh, blessed by a selection by the Greater Bethel Temple Mass Choir. This very fine choir is coming before you this morning. And if you need uh, help, assistance in your giving, the deacons and the deaconess and the trustees are more than happy to help you and to assist you. Let's receive this very fine choir with a mighty praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. Say praise the Lord.
Come on, offer him some praise for his goodness and for his mercy, for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. We ought to offer him some praise. God's been good to us. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. Hey, all of us, oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, this very fine choir. Singing to the glory of God for your goodness and your mercy toward us. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad that he did. You see, some what, that are here this year, uh, uh, some that would have liked to have been here are not here. But because of his goodness, and his mercy toward who? Us. We are for praise. Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. At this time, Sister Spaulding is coming with our announcements. Let's receive her by, with a hearty praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just have a few short announcements, and I will be out of your way. Uh, First, we would like to remind everyone on this coming Friday, which is November the 9th, it's on your calendar in the back of the program, that it will be Auxiliary Night, and the Christian Women's Ministry, the Men's Ministry, and the young people will be meeting on Friday at 7.30. And also, we'd like to remind everyone that on November the 11th, we will be going to Suffolk and Bishop Charles Trumbo, uh, for the pastoral anniversary on that afternoon, and that is a Sunday afternoon, next Sunday. So we will be going to fellowship with them. And one more announcement we'd like for the church family to know that Sister Cleotis Bomer's brother, his name is Herman Morris, passed. Um, visitation for Mr. Morris will be from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. on tomorrow, that's November the 5th, at New Zion, Baptist Church, located at 34th and Southern. The funeral will follow the visitation at 1 p.m. and Rogers Ockert Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Sister Bomer is um, one of 26 siblings, 26, and she is the last remaining one of those 26 siblings. And so you know uh, she needs prayer. So let's lift up Sister Bomer and also that entire family, amen. All right, thank you. If you'll keep those announcements in mind. Um, this time we're going to ask Sister Gracie Allen if she would come. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My fault. We want to welcome our family and our friends home. Amen. How many is this home to you? Amen. This may be where you started. And so we want to welcome you home. And at this time, our beautiful, sweet, loving, fantastic first lady, uh, Sister Rada. Sister Rada. Did I mess that up? Well, she belongs, she came from him. That's what the word says. Uh, First Lady Rhoda Johnson is coming to welcome you. Let's put your hands together for her.
Praise the Lord, everyone. On uh, an honor, in, uh, on behalf of my husband, Suffolk and Bishop Rader Johnson, and myself and all the saints here, Greater Bethel Temple Church family, we want to welcome you to our friends and family. We want you to sit back and enjoy the service, get involved, raise your hands, praise the Lord with us. As the choir just stated, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. <laughs> Yes. And, and another thing too, we are glad that you're here to worship with us. Amen. As I look out, <laughs> as I look out into the congregation, I see a lot of new faces that I don't know, that I'm looking forward to meeting you all after service. And I hope that you enjoy your time with us today and don't make it your last time here because Greater Bethel Temple Saints, we love you and welcome. Amen. You. Amen. Wonderful job, First Lady. And we would like to ask Sister uh, Pastor Doris Harris, if she'd be so kind to come and give us a response. Let's receive her with a hearty amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve. Truly, I consider it an honor giving thanks for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to your pastor, to those in the pulpit, and to First Lady. And to First Lady Stewart, God bless you all. And to Greater Bethel, this is my home. And I am so glad to call it my home. God called me out of darkness into the marvelous light right here at Greater Bethel. Hallelujah. They took me in the back and began to speak to me. Hallelujah. And they took me to the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said the water doesn't do anything. It doesn't change you. But it's all in the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And don't you know what? In two or three hours later, God filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That causes me to love. Hallelujah. That causes me to run for my life. And truly, again, I say thank you for having having us. Thank you for having Family and Friends Day, a time that we can get together and, and, and talk to one another. Maybe we haven't seen you for six months or a year, but Greater Bethel, I thank you for giving us the privilege to come together one more time. Again, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. And before I sit down, I want to tell you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, something is in the air. Something is going on in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that soon, 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 and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Soon. 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 
soon. Somebody said it won't be long, 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 it won't be long. Soon. <laughs> Woo! Glory, glory, glory. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. One we hear often. Are you rapture ready? <laughs> Are you rapture ready? <laughs> Are you rapture ready? Are you rapture ready? Because he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And the word said that he will not tarry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Harris, for that beautiful response. Amen. I don't know about you, but soon. <laughs> oh. Soon. Mm. Soon. The word said the Lord himself mm, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. Said the dead in Christ, they're going to get up first. Am I right about it? And we that are alive and remain are going to be caught up. <laughs> soon <laughs> I don't know about you but I'm looking for soon <laughs> oh God oh God oh God mm, I want to be starting something hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord okay we're looking at our program and it calls for a uh, tribute and I think sister Gracie Allen is coming followed by a presentation with a Deaconess Gail Briscoe. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Let's receive her with a hearty praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. So I was very honored to be asked to give a um, special tribute to um, First Lady Stewart on this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, <clears throat> I had to ask God to give me the words um, for a person who's done so much for all of us. So Mother Stewart, I cannot express enough gratitude and appreciation for the wisdom Kindness and love you have shown to me and to so many others down through the years. I have countless treasured memories of sitting among the young women in your Sunday school class, gleaning from the truths you taught from the word of God. I remember so many of the wonderful lessons you creatively helped us to understand through your gracefulness, gentleness, humor, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I remember as I listened to you teach, I would hope to be as wise, strong and radiant as you exemplified to us. I cherish the times growing up here as a young person because as I approached making decisions concerning my education, my future, and my walk with the Lord, the wisdom and foundational truths you imparted enriched my life greatly. I have admired how you have embraced others, strangers, people who look and sound differently than you, or even those who spoke other languages. There were no barriers keeping you from encouraging a soul to accept the Lord. I have observed your service of love to those with special needs and how you have reached out often to others of whom some may have overlooked. I appreciate your ability to be down to earth, relatable and kind, admiring your ability to approach anyone and win them to Jesus Christ. To say thank you only just simply is not enough to express how much you have meant to me, my family, and the Greater Bethel Temple Church family. <laughs> you have always had a special way of gently pushing me a little further out of my shyness into an Ephesian 6.10 kind of courage that charges us to finally, my brethren, 
be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You have always reminded me that I am special and that I am your girl. <laughs> it was this constant love and encouragement from you that I have kept with me until now and is impressed so deeply upon my heart that I can never forget how much of a blessing you have been in my life. I will never forget what you have done for me and how your walk with God continues to inspire me today. I love you, Mother Stewart. May God continue to bless you. Praise the Lord. First Lady Johnson is going to be assisting me. Uh, Victor, can you uh, escort your mother up here for me, please? up here again. <laughs> Praise the Lord again, everyone. <laughs> Lady Stewart, I would like to say I only have a few words. Uh, it's going to take me a couple more years to uh, have what she just said about you. <laughs> only been here two years, but in the two years that I've been here, you have, you have shown me nothing but grace and elegance in your acceptance of me being here. And I thank the Lord for you because I knew who you was when I first saw you. <laughs> yes, I did. Coming through that door, I said, that's the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had to tell me. You just kind of had that grace and elegance about you. And when a first lady has grace and elegance like that, that she's earned through tests and trials and, and God bringing her through, that's nothing to be ashamed of. And she held, she held her head high, and she's still holding it high. <laughs> and, and I, too, I'm learning from her. I'm, all I do, I sit back and watch people and I watch how they carry themselves in holiness. And I've learned a few things from her in the two years I've been here. I've learned how to carry myself in a more upward, elegant way, not to be high-minded, but to be secure in my holiness. <laughs> I've learned it from her, and as well as all of you, too, that's saved in this church. So I thank the Lord for this sweet, sweet lady here, and I thank the Lord for her family, her son and her daughter, how they carry themselves also with elegance and grace from their mother. So I wish you happy birthday, lady. Well, there's not too much I can say to add to that. <laughs> so we're just going to let Lysandra go ahead with this birthday song. <laughs> Thank you. 
don't mind. Friday, she turned 80 years old. Look at this. Look at that. So the church, we just wanted to give you a little token of love. And we know how you love reading chords. And so you have just a bunch of little chords in here from the members of the church. Happy birthday, Mother Stewart. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much. I wondered while people, they said, happy birthday, happy, I wonder how they knew. But I'm just so thankful, very, very, very grateful for these past 80 years, how the Lord has kept me. I feel good. I feel spiritually strong, naturally strong. And I'm just so grateful that the pastor has allowed this, you know? He didn't have to, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate my, my daughter, Gina. She's my daughter, but she's my friend too. Appreciate my son, Victor. He has been a fine son. <laughs> and I look at him, and he reminds me so much of my husband when we courted 58 years ago. We were married, we've been married 55 I mean, when he passed, but 58 years ago, Victor looks just like my husband, except he didn't have a, a beard. <laughs> so anyhow, but I just, I'm so thankful for my church family. I love you all and the board and everything, and just, just thank you. I have, as I mentioned to my children, I have the grateful, gratefuls, and the thankful, thankfuls. I am just so blessed. I thank the Lord for 80 years and 70 living for the Lord. <laughs> I was 10 years old when I got the Holy Ghost. So it's been 70 years being saved and 80 in my natural life. Thank you. <laughs> We just have one more little surprise back in the back when you go back there for dinner, you'll see. Come on, put your hands together again. To God be the glory. 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 I don't think you heard me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. And I know because, because some people have asked me, well, who do we give it to? So just in case you didn't get a chance to, to uh, drop your card in the basket, you saw what it looked like. Just go by and drop your, drop your card in the basket and let Mother Stewart know how much we really, really love her. Amen. Amen. All right, saints, it is happy time. Happy time. We can give back into the Lord a portion of what he has given to us, amen? So we're gonna ask you to make preparation for your offering. Uh, don't forget your special offering. Don't forget, uh, and I often remember Bishop is Bishop over the Dominican, and they got some little yellow envelopes back there. Take one of them, put a few dollars into it. You'd be surprised how far a few dollars goes in the Dominican, am I right, Bishop? And we have some things going on here at the church. Just, just be an extra special blessing to the church today, amen? amen? Like Sis said, some faces we haven't seen for a while. And uh, sometimes we had to play catch up. Why don't we play catch up today and be a blessing to the house of the Lord, amen? amen. All right, at this time the choir is coming uh, with uh, two selections. And I'm sure they're coming to bless us real good. Amen. Let's receive this choir with a hearty amen.
didn't they, didn't they work it out? 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 How you gonna pay your rent? All your money spent. Little bit to buy some shoes. Baby, need a pair of shoes. Didn't they work it out? Didn't they work it out? Didn't they, 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 didn't they work it out? Then they work it out. Turn it out. All right. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. <laughs> that he'll work it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about you? How about you? Ah, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. My God, my God. Mm, 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 mm. Just standing here thinking about all the things <laughs> that he's worked out. My God, my God. He's a good God. Somebody say, God is a good God. Yes, he is. All right. All right. And he's yet. Working it out. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for this very fine choir. Come on, give them a big hand. Praising God, singing praises unto our God. Amen. 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 All right, y'all stop that. <laughs> Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. At this time, it gives me great honor and great pleasure to present to some and introduce to others the father of this house. Amen. Amen. He's, our, uh, he's the one that's leading us to glory. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Give the man God, of God respect and love and reverence. Our own, the Honorable Bishop Rada Johnson. Come on, praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's bow our heads a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the service thus far. We thank you for your presence and your power in our midst. We thank you for all those that have gathered together here, family, friends, and first-time visitors. We pray, Lord, that your word would have free course in the lives of your people. You said it will not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you please and prosper unto you have said it. Oh, God, set somebody free by the power of your word. Let your word bring life. Let your word bring salvation. Let your word bring deliverance to those that are seeking right now. Please bless him all we ask in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to acknowledge um, one we have in our audience, very distinguished young man uh, who is pastoring the church uh, that is here with us today. And also he is in law enforcement. He is the son of Deaconess Gail Briscoe. Uh, Pastor Officer Philip McFeeder is going to ask him to stand. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for him. God bless you. And um, um, we are grateful that he's here with us, as well as everyone that have sacrificed to be with us on uh, this great occasion. Um, we do have a little baby girl to dedicate uh, at the end of services. Uh, baby London. Kaylee Carleen Saffel. Did I say it right? Saffel sounds like I'm speaking in tongues there a little bit, but um, beautiful baby girl of Sister Nicole and Leonard Williams. And so we're going to be dedicating uh, that baby at the end of service. Praise the Lord. And so we're happy for everyone that's here. We hope that those that were notified to move their vehicles, uh, to move them because we don't want the city to come and tow you. Um, and you want the church to pay the bill. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Can we say amen? 
because uh, we, we don't want you to, to go through anything like that. But we do honor the Lord on today, um, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you also give honor to my wife of 35 years in this December. Praise the Lord. And to also Lady Stewart, happy birthday, Lady Stewart, and to her family. God bless you. And I am honored and privileged. I feel honored and privileged to have been part of uh, the 80th celebration of Bishop Stewart um, a few years ago and also to be part of the celebration of Lady Stewart on her 80th. Uh, birthday, God bless you, heaven smile upon you. I'm not gonna hold you long because I'm looking out there and I think you're hungry. We're in the Bethel Temple, can show enough cook. Praise the Lord, and I wanna thank, give me a little bit on these monitors here. I wanna thank all those that are working so hard in the kitchen, uh, even though they're in there now, I know you can hear me because the services is being broadcast even in our kitchen and in other parts of our building. So I wanna thank all of you all that are working there in the kitchen, all of you all that are in our audience that have worked uh, to make this Family and Friends Day uh, a success. Um, we thank God for you and thank God for everyone that is here and also Pastor Doris Harris and her husband, Deacon Harris. We are honored to have them uh, here with us on today. God bless you. I'm not going to be before you long. We just want to give you a few words uh, from the word of the Lord found in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter number four. Very familiar passage of scripture to, of us, to those of us that are Bible students and on today. And we're grateful uh, for just another day that the Lord has kept us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. In a time where we don't know what's going to happen. And of course, our prayers are with the families of those that lost loved ones in that Kroger shooting and in the synagogue shooting and in the yoga facility shooting that happened just, I believe, on the other day. Amen. A lot of destruction, a lot of catastrophe going on, but God is still in control. Is that right? I still believe that. Let's all stand as we read the word of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, 5, and 6. And then we will... Uh, going to the sermon for today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, 4, 5, and 6. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. All the people said... Amen. Say these words with me. There's only one way to God. All right, God bless you. you. may be seated. Praise the Lord. As we've said, there's a lot of things going on, even in this city. People don't feel safe anymore, especially in the places where you automatically assume that you are secure and safe the enemy has even seemed to invade it, those places also. We're seeing a lot of things that have occurred that we haven't seen in this country before. It seems like that the civil unrest and the violence and the crime are not peculiar to third world countries or to communist countries or to Arab countries, it is become right at home in the United States of America. There's civil unrest all over this country. Of course, we know in our government, can you say amen? The president has fired more people uh, than he has on The Apprentice since he's been in the White House. A lot of discord, a lot of civil unrest in government places, in our states, in our cities, in our neighborhood, and one thing about it is that man is still constantly trying to find the solution and, to, and the answer, the panacea, to all of the unrest that we're going through. Our police officers, and I support police officers, I believe that law enforcement is 
for us because they are people just like us that have developed a spirit of inspiration to stand up and to go into law enforcement to try to make a difference in our community and in our country. But even they, with all of their expertise and training that they have and ingenuity, many of them are strapped and don't really know what to do. That's the situation that we're in. Uh, I was reading the news the other day, and before I tell you that, I was thinking about Halloween and how it is very risky today for us to send our children out to the houses of strangers. And for the most part, you don't get a treat, you get a trick. I saw in the news where there was some rush to the hospital, children rushed to the hospital because some of the candy was laden and tainted with methamphetamines. And I saw another news article where they were finding sewing needles and much of the candy and fruit that um, the children had collected. I want you to know that the devil is real. And what he is trying to do and what he is doing is real. And so as man seems to try to figure out how to get himself out of the dilemma that he has gotten himself into, we see a rise in depression, a rise in people being bipolar. For the most part, people are just not happy today. You ought to take out the time. See, I, I, I watch people, I worked in uh, the prison system for 26 years and they train us how to be observant, how to uh, watch things. And I have caught many people in the prison doing things that they should not have been doing uh, by just simply just watching them watch me. You see, a lot of times people are up to no good if you can discover that they're watching you. Can we say amen? <laughs> I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but some of y'all may know what I'm talking about. Uh, People are not happy today. You can look out in the store and see the expression on people's faces. You can aim it even on the job. Uh, you can see how folk are going through in our school system. Praise the Lord. Children that are uh, starving and don't have uh, enough to eat and the homes are broken and the parents are fighting each other and the children are uh, scarred for life because the things that parents are saying to each other and the spousal abuse and all of these things are going on. This is not a very good time for man. You can look at your own life and the things that you're going through in your own life. It seems to be an emptiness and a void within your own soul that sometimes it's very difficult for you to even admit yourself. But this is why many people, they turn to alcohol and turn to drugs and turn to uh, 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 individuals, to sex and all these type of things and even those that have been hurt by relationships of a person of the opposite sex, they get so hurt and many times get so scarred to where they figure out that maybe if I turn to a person of the same sex, maybe that might give me some self-fulfillment or the rise of transgenderism where an individual is un so unhappy and so uh, unfulfilled that maybe I'm not really a boy, maybe I'm really a girl, maybe that will give me happiness, or maybe I'm not really a girl, maybe I'm really a boy. They, man is in a bad, bad way to go. There's a lot of things going on in our world. We're living in a time where most of the foster children are taken care of by kinder care. Grandparents, because of the irresponsibilities of their children, uh, have to resort to raising a second set of children. Amen, which is what, probably one of the last things any parent wants to do once you get your own out the house. Can we say amen? I'm, I wish I was in the right church. I don't know if, am I, am I, am I in the right church? Praise the Lord, amen. I know I was glad when our kids left. Amen. Now we love them. Can we say amen? But I was glad when, when they left. I was glad I didn't have to go out and buy Halloween costumes and amen. I was glad I didn't have to 
praise God, pack that tree out for Christmas and all those type of things. I, I graduated from that. Amen. But I can't imagine where, amen, a grandparent has to step in and, amen, do what their children have seen them do but fail to do. The example that the parents have left the children and the children seem to want to go their own way and do their own thing. I remember I was talking to a woman that owned uh, dry cleaners and, amen, and every time I would go in there, she'd always have her grandchildren in there and, 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 and I would say, uh, oh, you, you watch your grandchildren today? And, and she said, well, yeah, my daughter and them, they at work. I said, well, ain't you at work? <laughs> Hey, Amen. You're running a business, but and she made the comment. She said, "I've never seen it in all my days where our children become so needy." Hey, Amen. When I was coming up, when I was a young adult, I took responsibility. Hey, Amen. I took, I stepped up to the plate, uh, and if that meant that I had to sacrifice, that she was making the point that many young parents today don't really want to sacrifice for their children. Praise God, but they have pawned them off on somebody else. I didn't intend to say all this, y'all. I know it might spoil some of your appetite, but amen. Jesus said the truth has set you free. Can we say amen? Amen. A lot of parents, they tell me that 40,000 children here, amen, in the state of Kentucky are under the care of kinder care. Praise the Lord. Under the care of grandparents that, amen, have stepped up to take over the responsibility that their children have failed to do. Praise God, we are in a terrible, terrible situation and we can't look to the mayor to fix everything. And I know Mayor Fisher is a good guy. Praise the Lord, I met him. He invited me up to his office to talk to him sometime. And praise God, he's a nice guy. And many of our politicians, I think, in this city that I have met are generally good people that really try to do the right thing. But it's one thing to stand on the outside and have all the answers than to aim and actually be put in the position. And that's when you really find out, praise God, that the, that the problem is not as easily to fix as they first thought it was. I wonder y'all hear me on today. Praise the Lord. Everybody's got an answer, amen, to problems. Praise God, amen, when it is not their problem, when they are not in the seat. Just think about some of us that are parents or have been parents, how we, amen, used to visit our children's basketball games or soccer games or baseball games. We always seem to have an attitude against the coach. Can we say amen? Amen. The coach don't know what he's doing and he needs to put my son in. He needs to put my daughter in. What are they doing? But when you are in the coach's seat, amen, you see things a lot differently than you would by standing and sitting in the stands. Amen. I wonder am I in the right church this morning? Amen. It's a different story when you are, amen, in the position that that person is in. Amen. So I don't think we ought to be too hard on our councilmen and on our mayors and, and all these individuals because I genuinely think that they are doing the best that they can do. But the problem is much bigger, amen, than they can solve. Amen. We need Jesus, amen, in office. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. That's what we need. Amen. And I understand that uh, it seems to be a cliche about going to church and it seems to be a cliche about getting saved. It seems to be a cliche about walking with Jesus and coming to Jesus and all these other types of things. Well, brothers and sisters, that's because you are like the parent in the stand and amen, you are not in the position where the coach is actually involved with the team. Praise God. You cannot possibly think of what it is like or know what it is like to walk with Jesus when you have never had him. Can the church shout hallelujah? You cannot possibly know what it is like to be saved if you have never been saved. I'm here to tell you that being saved is the most beautiful experience that anybody could ever experience. Oh, I'm, I know I'm in the right church right now. Can the church shout hallelujah? Amen. I want you to know that Jesus is not just some white man, some blonde haired blue-eyed, amen, devil that, amen, the nation of Islam talks about. Amen. He is God himself. God is a spirit and praise God he's real and he is somebody that gets involved in the lives of his people. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, you don't have to be as miserable as you are. Amen. You don't have to have a void down in your soul. Jesus is the answer for all of life's problems. 
and I'm a witness of that coming from a family, amen, of criminals, coming from a family, praise God, of prostitution and drug addiction and alcohol addiction and crime and violence. I didn't want that life for myself. Praise God, grandmother being a prostitute and amen, father being a pimp that ran a brothel and aunties and uncles that ran criminal empires. I knew I didn't have to be that way. I'm here to tell you, just because your environment is messed up, don't mean you gotta be messed up. Can the church shout hallelujah? Amen. Jesus has the power to come in right where you are in your environment. Pick you up and turn you around. Set your feet on solid ground. I'm a witness. Can I? I ain't got any other witnesses out there that know what I'm talking about. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Praise God. We think that, amen, praise God. Man has made us think that there is no panacea. There is no answer to the problems that we have. Listen, there ain't nobody in this city that's not saved that's having a better time than I'm having. Praise God. You can't say the dope dealer's having a good time. Praise God. Because I remember talking to a young dope drug kingpin individual uh, in the prison where I worked at. And praise God, he used to transport kilos of drugs through the, uh, 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 through the airways, through the, amen, airplanes. And praise God, one day he got caught and, amen, they sentenced him to life in prison. And he was only 25 years old. And praise God, and through his efforts of, amen, uh, 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 legal appeals and all that, he was able uh, to give some of that time back and get his time broke down from a life bit to a meatball, which is like something like five to seven years, as they call it, in the penitentiary and praise God as I talked to him I said doc what are you going to do when you get out of prison amen praise God what kind of life you going to live now he said you know I made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars selling drugs but amen the life of a drug dealer is the roughest life you could ever live he said because you are constantly looking over your shoulder amen looking for the police or looking for an undercover cop or looking for another drug dealer to try to rob you or try to kill you and then one you get your dope you gotta wonder whether or not it's cut up right or whether it is latent or uh, uh, mixed with some foreign substance and amen praise God then you gotta worry about your family whether or not amen uh, whether, whether or not they are safe and praise God because of this life amen he said this life is not even worth it he said I'm here to tell you amen the life of a drug dealer is the roughest life you could ever live I said, well, what about all the women and the gold and the chains that, that seem that they seem to glorify on television? He said, it's not like that, brother. Amen. You might have moments and pockets of, amen, uh, uh, times where you do enjoy that, but the majority of the time, you are constantly looking over your shoulder. And he said to me, he said, and you know what? I figured out, uh, amen, that the life of a drug dealer, uh, amen, is not an eight to three job or a seven to three job or a nine to five job. I wonder y'all hear me today. Hallelujah. Hey man, might be some drug dope dealers out there listening to me right now. You know what I'm talking about. It's not a nine to five job. It's a job that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he said, and I figured out all of the money that I made and all of the time I spent dealing drugs. Amen. He said it came out less than minimum wage. And so he said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do when I get out of prison. He said, McDonald's pays a lot more than drug dealing that I did for years. Amen. I'll do better if I got a minimum wage job. Y'all ain't hearing me on this morning. I'll do better getting a minimum wage job where I can have some peace, where I can have some contentment, where I can have some safety and make even more money and not have to work as hard. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. I never thought about that. Uh, amen. So I'm here to tell you, amen, you can't live a better life uh, as I close other than living for Jesus. Amen. One thing about living for Jesus is that, and this is the part I really love, I like getting down on my knees and I like driving in the car 
while walking through the streets talking to God and God talks right back to me. Let me know that I hear what you have to say. I love it when I'm down and going through some things. He comes in and wraps his loving arms around me and lets me know that everything is going to be all right. Amen. He comes in there and lets me know, amen, that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Uh, there's a whole lot of folk in this church uh, and got some great testimonies as to the things that God could do. Amen. I'm so glad to be saved. Uh, so glad to be sanctified. I don't know where I would be if it had not been for the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on to say hallelujah. And as I close, the apostle Paul, he is writing to the saints in Ephesus. And this time he is locked up in prison for, amen, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. But in the 19th chapter, amen, on one of his missionary journeys, he travels to the city of Ephesus for the first time. Uh, and he traveled there to preach the word of God, to tell the Ephesian folk, amen, about Jesus. Can the church shout hallelujah? And as he got there, the Bible lets us know that he encountered, praise God, 12 men. And he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen. You know, folk talk about the Holy Ghost, but I want you to know the Holy Ghost is real. Amen. Hallelujah. And you don't get it by saying a sinner prayer and asking God into your heart and then walk away. Amen. And steal the same way that you came when the folk person gets the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost pops out of you to let you know that I have come down inside your soul. Don't listen to folk that try to tell you that speaking in tongues is wrong, especially when they don't have it. Can the church shout hallelujah? You got to get it for yourself. Try it for yourself. Amen. God will fill you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet and a change will take place. You'll never ever be the same once God fills you with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is himself coming into your heart amen I took it out of you I wish I had some witnesses up in here come on and shout hallelujah well he asked them have you received uh, the Holy Ghost since you believe they said we haven't even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost and then he asked them how were you baptized and uh, the Bible says we were baptized under John's baptism uh, and then Paul began to preach to them about Jesus and how praise God John the Baptist talked about Jesus and when they heard that the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and I say that because there might be some of y'all that might have been baptized already Amen. But you need to be baptized again if they didn't say in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you go down in the name Jesus, the blood that was shed on Calvary is applied to your life and washing all those sins away. Can I get a witness in here? Don't matter what you did uh, when you go down in Jesus' name. Amen. He's washing lying out of your life. Uh, He's washing fornication out of your life. He's washing homosexuality out of your life. He is washing drug addiction out of your life. He's washing alcoholism. Am I in the right church this morning? Out of your life. Don't do it. And Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because when the name gets on you, the devil can't do nothing to you. Huh? Clap your hands and shout glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Huh? Let the church shout hallelujah. Huh? The apostolic church uh, is the only church uh, that are baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, you see, my family, we used to be Masons. Uh, uh, and uh, we used to be uh, the Kojic church. Y'all heard of that? Uh, we used to be Baptists. Uh, amen. But the difference came in our life. Uh, that's when we went down uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I know that power in the name Jesus because huh? when you call that name uh, the devil got to back up uh, and run for his life huh? when you call uh, the name Jesus huh? healing uh, has got to come your way huh? when you call uh, the name Jesus huh? all of hell huh? has got to flee uh, no wonder I heard uh, a songwriter say uh, in the name of Jesus uh, we got the victory in the name of Jesus. Satan got to flee when I call. Her. 
and great name. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. We have the victory. Clap your hand and say, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Let the church shout hallelujah. And so they went down in the name Jesus. And Paul laid hands on him. And the Holy Ghost came on him. And they spake in other tongues and prophesied. But the Bible tell me that there was a great uproar in the city of Ephesus. Because one of the seven wonders of the world in that day was the temple of Diana. Can the church say hallelujah? And in Ephesus was a city that was laden with idolatry. In Ephesus, they worship idol gods. In Ephesus, they worship Artemis. In Ephesus, they worship the goddess by the name of Diana. And so Paul, locked up in prison, was concerned about the church in Ephesus. And that's why he wrote the book of Ephesians. And that's why he said in chapter 4, there's one body, one spirit. Even as you are called, one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. I know y'all worshiping Artemis, the goddess of Diana. I know you're worshiping one of the seven wonders in the world. But I want you to know Artemis can't save you. Diana can't save you. There's only one way. One way. And that's Jesus. And as I close, I'm here to tell you the Pope can't save you. Trump can't save you. Drugs can't save you. That man can't save you. That job can't save you. There's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. And if you give him your life, you will be brand new. You will be changed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are all things are all things are are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The things you used to do, you're not going to want to do them no more. It ain't about what you can't do. When Jesus comes in, he just changes your mind, changes your appetite, changes your taste, changes, changes everything about you. You don't even look the same. No wonder the songwriter said, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus. Oh, I got any Jesus folk out there. Young people, you're going to need him one day. You're going to need him one day. You need him right now. They said, the reason why young people don't get saved because they feel they don't need Jesus. That's a trick of the devil. Look how many young folk are committing suicide. Hey, man, some of y'all probably thought about suicide. You ain't got to kill yourself. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have to live the way that you live it. You can have inner peace and inner joy. This ain't no cliche. This is real. This is real. Yeah. 
Some of y'all, they used to come here. They don't come no more. One thing you have to admit, it's real. <laughs> you gotta admit that. It is real now. You remember the day, the very hour when he filled you with his Holy Ghost power? You remember the day, second in the choir, with the young people, you remember? You know what's real, can we say amen? You just out there fooling around, wasting your time. You know for yourself that you ain't happy. How can you be happy walking away from Jesus? Thank you. Those of you all that have never experienced the devil tried to get you to ignore that. Explore and experiment in this. See if this will quench your appetite. And if you are honest with yourself, you know what you have done to date has not worked. Here at Greater Bethel, we got what works. I was listening to some black supremacists on 104.7 yesterday. <laughs> I wanted to call in. <laughs> but uh, they would have the advantage, so I didn't do that. They were saying that the white man has taught us how to commit crime. They're saying that the violence that is ripping Louisville apart the reason why some of our black brothers and sisters are doing it is because the white man taught us that through slavery. I said to myself, and this was an older guy, I said, he talking like a fool. In other words, we don't have enough sense to know what's right or wrong. So let's put it off of somebody else. You know what that is? Putting your responsibility off of somebody else. Black folk, the killing black folk, know what they are doing. Can we say amen? amen. <laughs> the man that went and shot up the Krogers knew what he was doing. Amen. What you talking about, an insanity plea? If he had enough knowledge to load the gun, if he had enough knowledge to go to a church where he knows there's multiple black folk, why is it then that he don't have enough knowledge not to pull the trigger? You know what all you listening to? The lies of the devil, that's all you listening to. Part of our problem is that we don't take responsibility. That's not just black folk, that's all folk. Can we say amen? amen. And, I, and they kept talking about the black church, the black church. I wanted to call in and say, let me tell you something. God's church is not a black church. I wanted to call in and say, so obviously you ain't talking about God's church. Cause God's church is not a black church. God's church is not a white church. God's church is not a, an American church. It's a universal church. That's why it's my mission to make sure that Greater Bethel is thoroughly integrated. Thoroughly integrated. Because heaven is going to be thoroughly integrated. We say amen. The white man ain't your enemy. The devil is all of our enemy. Now I have respect for our civil rights leaders. A lot of respect for them. But what you got to realize, most of them are not even saved. So even though Dr. Martin Luther King was the greatest man, in my book, one of the greatest men of the 20th century, he did a lot for civil rights. He got the civil rights law bill to be passed and signed that would guarantee to you and to me my civil rights. But Martin Luther King couldn't make nobody love anybody. It took the Holy Ghost to do that. Praise the Lord. So you don't get anything out of all this hollering and screaming that I did before you go in there and eat. 
Get this, that the only way out of your dilemma is Jesus. When God saved me, he broke the cycle of criminality in my family. And they hated me for it because they wanted me to be like them. I have worked in prisons where there have been generations of generations of child molesters. And I worked long enough to see the grandchildren come in for the same offense. And we had access to their files and I could read what happened to them. He was molested by his father because his father molested his father. All down the line, a line of murderers. I knew a whole family, the whole family was a family of murderers. But I did not want that life for me. And when I was 15 years old, I said, Lord, you got to help me because I'm turning into what my environment is trying to dictate to me to be. And God took a shy, skinny kid that didn't know nothing, washed my sins away in Jesus' name, and filled me with the Holy Ghost. And made me the biggest mouth in Louisville about it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My family hated me for that. And all of them that hated me are now dead. But I'm going on. In Jesus' name. The first one saved in my family. A preacher. Married my wife in the church. Raised our six children in the church. They all got saved in the church. One of them is pastoring my former church in Michigan. His daughter, my granddaughter, they just discovered can sing like Minnie Ripperton. Y'all don't remember Minnie Ripperton, do y'all? Y'all young people don't know her. See, a lot of these singers can't sing today. That's why they're rapping. Can we say amen? Because they can't sing. Anybody can rap. You just sit down and take out some time and write down some stuff that rhyme. Get a beat, because the beat is all the same. Give me a beat on them drums over there right quick. That's all it is. And you see guys walking down the street. No job walking down the street like this. No money walking down the street like this. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Get a job, you know what I'm saying. Young ladies, don't sell. Oh, and I went to meddling, didn't I? I was preaching, now I'm meddling. <laughs> Young ladies, don't sell yourself cheap. Don't just settle for anything that comes along. You're more valuable than that. If he ain't got no job, say hit the road, Jack. You don't give no man no money. You say amen. My father said, boy, you don't never give no woman no money. Women give money to you. <laughs> but when you meet Sister Rhoda, she wants you to give, she, you, you wind up giving her everything. I just gave her everything. <laughs> now I got some sense now. I don't give her my whole check now. <laughs> but I'm just saying, sister, don't be selling yourself cheap. Don't sit there on the block waiting for your turn when he gets done with Sally Sue and all these other girls. Don't do that. They only treat you like that because you let them treat you like that. There's some good men out there. Oh, they out there. They out there. Well, I can't find them. That's because you're looking in the wrong place. You don't go to bar to find a wife. Can we say amen? <laughs> the best women are in the church. Why you think some of the nappy head rascals come to church that don't mean no good? They come because they're scoping out the sisters. Well, guess what? The bishop is scoping out them because I got the training and I can see what they can't see. I got 26 years of training. Some of them, some of them ain't even 26 years old. Are y'all hearing me today? Hallelujah. I ain't mad. 
I'm enjoying Jesus. And I just want you to enjoy Jesus. So as I close, because I have said that about 10, uh, uh, praise the Lord, Sister Wagner. God bless you. Come on, give Sister Wagner a hand. Good to see you. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, maybe even one or two enemies out there, what I want to say to you is that this saved life is real. It is real. All of us know crooked folk that say they, they say, is that right? All of us know crooked preachers. Can we say amen? amen. That's all about women, money, and chicken. Now, I got a retirement, so I don't need your money. I got the best woman in the world. But I, when I get off my diet, you can bring me as much fried chicken as you want to. <laughs> but the point is, is this. This is real. And salvation is a life-changing experience. Family and Friends Day is not just for us to get together with our family. It's a day to extend an opportunity to you that are family and friends that have not yet experienced this, the truthfulness of this. That's what this day is for. And we have prepared food at our own expense. Our workers have worked since Wednesday to get things together, to make things perfect for you. We even had Terminex come here and spray so there won't be none of those unwelcome critters crawling around. All this is for you. And we want you to come to Jesus. Just try Jesus. What do you have to lose? Well, I might have to give up my boyfriend. You know he ain't no good anyway. He ain't even working. Well, I, I, I gonna have to give up my girl. You know she cuss you out all the time, disrespect you. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Just come and get Jesus. Those of you all that have left, come on back. What you left here is still here waiting on you. Can we say amen? Just come. What do you have to lose? You done tried everything else. Why not give Jesus an opportunity. He is right here for you. Being saved is not hard. Being saved is the most easiest thing that I have done in my life. You know why? Because my mind is made up. And God has become real in my life. Aren't you tired of listening to what other folk have to say about being saved without even noticing, uh, uh, experiencing it yourself. Come on. Come on, young lady. Come on. Come on, young man. Jesus is real to me. Today is your day. Today is your day. What better day to do it? On Family and Friends Day. Come on, come on. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you, sister. He's calling you, brother. Come on, have the courage. You know you need to come. You know you need to come. Come and experience it yourself. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Come on, come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Come on and be saved. Today is your day. You're not here by accident. You thought the food got you here. You got food at home. 
There was something about when they asked you that you said yes. God is in that yes that you gave him. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. He's calling you. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. Come on, brother. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus. Come be saved. Come be saved. Come be saved. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on. He's calling you. We tried everything else. He is the answer. He is the answer. Come to Jesus today. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Come on, somebody. Because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I pray. Come on, the Lord loves you. He sees your pain. He sees your pain. He knows what you're going through. Yeah, that's why my heart is filled with prayer. Come on, come on, the Lord. He's calling you. I can see you right now in your seat. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Come on, God is pulling on you. Come on. Care for me. Oh, yes, you did. Such a special way. Come on, he's calling. Come on, that's right. He's calling. He's calling. Have the courage to come. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart. Come on, the Lord is calling you. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Because you care. That's why I love him. He cared for me. In such a special way. have to come down by yourself. Ask somebody to come down with you. They'll be glad to come down with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. My heart. My mind. My soul. My mind. My soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me. Way back Calvary. That's why I come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give your life to Jesus. Magnify your name. That's why my heart is Come on, somebody, somebody. Oh, my heart, my mind. My mind. My soul belongs to you. Come on today, he's calling you. Why would you do this to yourself? Answer is right here. Just come and try. You can't possibly know that it is not unless you have tried it for yourself. He's calling you, brother. Oh, yes, he is. He's calling you, sister. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Calling you. One more time. My heart. My mind. My soul belongs to you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He paid the price for me. Oh, yes, you did. Way back, Calvary. Come on, we have water in the pool. We got clothing. These ministers will help you. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, it's not too late. It's not too late. You're looking for something, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. 
It's here. You don't have to look no further. It's right here. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, yes. That's why my heart is filled with Yes. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you right now, Lord. There are some that are sitting in their seat bound. Some that are sitting in their seat, Lord. Can't get loose. Jesus Christ, you are the Savior of the world. You came seeking and to save that which is lost. Deal with these individuals, Lord. They need you. They need you in the worst way. They are going through things within their spirit, within their soul that only you know about. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we want to see them saved. We don't want to see them lost. Don't let them leave the same way that they came. Jesus Christ, as your servant that you sent all the way down here from Michigan, uprooted me and my wife, left everything to come down here to do what you have called us to do. I stand here before you as your servant in this holy sanctuary. Help these people, Lord. Some of them don't really realize that they need to be saved. In the name of Jesus, those that have walked away from the church, gone to the false church, Lord, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, right now. You said your word when I return unto you void. I'm holding you to that. I'm holding you to that, Lord. I'm holding you to that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. <laughs> At this time, we want to dedicate this beautiful baby girl we're gonna ask if the parents, the grandparents, and all those that will have a part in rearing baby London's life in the Lord. I was told out of my siblings that I was the only one dedicated to God. My two sisters, my two brothers were not. I was told I was the only one and I thank God for that, because I believe that's why I'm here today, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, I'm gonna ask this Nicole and the grandparents to come, and First Lady, and Lady Stewart to come also, as we give this child back to God. Can we say amen? I want you to know that this works. I'm a witness of that, being the only one in my family that was dedicated to the Lord. This is not some, Kirby, pay attention, give me a napkin. This is not some ritual that we're going through. This is something that's real. Can we say amen? Are there any godparents? All right. Look at here, it's the whole family. We want your whole family to come. Whether they're in the church, out of the church, the whole family. Amen. Oh, look at her, she is so beautiful. Y'all get a shout at her? <laughs> we want everybody to see her. You know these services are broadcast live all over the world. Y'all know that? I think some of y'all do know because I see your hair doing, it's looking good. Deacon is Briscoe, will you come? Deacon is Briscoe is our only deaconess. Makes her special. All right. Let's have um, Evangelist Loud, can you come? 
All right. She's over the ministers. All right. Let's all stand. I can't do it like Bishop Stewart used to do it. I had to go study and see how he did it. But we are grateful that the Lord has blessed this child to come into the world. I believe this child has a purpose. She lost the last one. But this one, God ordained to be here. She has a purpose. She has a purpose. She has a purpose. I want to have three prayers prayed over this child. I would like Evangelist Loudon and Deaconess Briscoe to pray as they lay hands on the child. And then the first ladies to pray over the child, and then I'm going to say the final prayer. Can we say amen? amen. All right, so I uh, want you to make your way over there. God bless you. All right, lay hands on. Amen. Stretch your hands this way. Evangelist loud. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come this afternoon, Lord God, First, say, thank you, Lord God. You allowed this baby to be born. Oh, God, you're a healthy baby, Lord God. All her fingers and all her toes, and Lord God. We just say, thank you, Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you for the parents, the mother, hallelujah, the father, the grandparents, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for you allow this baby, Lord God, to be born and to come. Lord God, offering this baby back to you, Lord God. Lord God, your word to say, train up a child in the way it should go. When it depart, will not depart. Lord God, the mother is bringing the baby to the altar. Oh God, for this special prayer, Lord God. Lead and guide even the grandparents, Lord God. Be with them, Lord God. Protect them, Lord God. Oh God, we just say thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings, Lord God, to this family, Lord God. Oh God, this family is a blessing to this church. Oh God, just continue to ring your blessing upon this family, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. All right, Lady Stewart. before you right now, Lord God. Lord, we honor this family, this baby, Lord God, that you're allowed to be brought into this world, Lord. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, that you camp your angels round about this baby, Lord. Camp your angels around about this family, Lord God. Oh God, she's here for a reason, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we ask you, Lord God, that you bless her, Lord, in the rearing of her, Lord God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you Watch over the family. Lord, we thank you for this family. We thank you for this church family. Lord God, for we all gonna have a hand in her rearing, Lord. We all gonna watch over her. We're all gonna be praying. We are gonna be praying for this baby. Lord God, in this family, hallelujah, in these evil times, Lord God. We thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name, God, amen. Stretch your hands this way. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, oh God, that you have brought this child in this world that is ripped and torn with sin, debauchery, promiscuity, and all kinds of evil. And oh God, the parents here, Lord, know no better way of protection for this baby than for you to watch over and keep her, Lord, that your eyes will be upon, there, upon her when their eyes cannot be. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Watch over and protect her from hurt, harm, and dangers, seen and unseen. Where there are predators out there, Lord, where there are mothers that are throwing their children in trash cans. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the parents and the godparents, the grandparents, and all those that love this child. Bless them and the wisdom that they impart to this child. And oh God, with the age, when this child reaches the age of accountability, let it become a true born child of the kingdom. Bless the parents the grandparents, 
the godparents, and all those that will have a hand in rearing this child. As Hannah gave Samuel back to you, we give London back to you, the best hands to be in. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and say amen. them face the congregation so y'all can take some pictures. This is a momentous occasion. Can we say amen? God bless you. Come on first lady. Come on back up here. We want your pretty face in this picture. Not just mine. Yours too. Come on this way. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Can we all get in? All right, come on, give the Lord a hand. God bless you. Oh, wonderful, the hairdresser. You think you can do something about it? Well, we'll talk later. Congratulations, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Come on, give the Lord another hand. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to prepare to be dismissed. On this Friday, we will be at, no. Next Sunday, we'll be at Bishop Trumbull's, and on the 25th of November, we have to go to Elizabethtown, Pastor Jackson's church. It'll be a 5.30 service on Sunday. Choir is asked to say, we're gonna go down there and pack our church out, encourage your heart in a special way. <laughs> now, we're gonna have some spotting come with some announcements and some directions concerning um, the order that we will serve. They have some good food back there. Uh, I have gained some weight since I've been down here. Uh, and I am not taking any responsibility for that. That's Greater Bethel Temple's fault. <laughs> I just got done preaching about not taking responsibility, did I? Look what I do. I was wondering if anybody caught that. Uh, but y'all down here, y'all know how to cook. Praise the Lord, and we thank God for you. So this time, Sister Spaulding is going to give us some directions. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. We thank him.